के कार्यक्रम का शुभारंभ महात्मा गांधी जी के चित्र पर दीप प्रज्वलित कर किया जाएगा इसके लिए मैं निवेदन करूंगा माननीय डॉक्टर अभिजीत पाठक जी आदरणीय सुश्री राधा भट्ट जी अध्यक्षा गांधी शांति प्रतिष्ठान और श्री सुरेंद्र कुमार गांधी शांति प्रतिष्ठान
कुमार गांधी शांति प्रतिष्ठान से अनुरोध है कि वे मंच पर अपना अपना स्थान ग्रहण करें आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर अभिजीत पाठक कार्डनी टेक द सीट ऑन द स्टेज अलॉन्ग विथ सुश्री राधा भट्ट चेयरपर्सन गांधी पीस फाउंडेशन एंड श्री सुरेंद्र कुमार सेक्रेटरी गांधी पीस फाउंडेशन अब अध्यक्ष जी से निवेदन है कि वे मुख्य वक्ता जी का सॉलमेंट का स्वागत करें Respected Chairperson, Honorable Dr. Abhijit Pathak and Distinguished Gentlemen and Ladies, Gandhi Peace Foundation Lecture Series was started in 1975. Eminent persons like Swami Ranganathananda, Dr. D. S. Kothari, Sri R. R. Divakar, Lord Flies, His Holiness Dalai Lama, Sri Sadi Kali, Sri Homer Jack, Justice D. A. Desai. Sri Srinder Mohan, Prof. Ramchandra Gandhi, Prof. Samdong Rinpoche, Prof. Anand Kumar, Sri Viji Vargis, Prof. Rameshwar Roy and others had graced this occasion. Today, we are here to listen to Dr. Abhijit Pathak, an eminent sociologist and professor of Jawaharlal Nehru University. Gandhi Peace Foundation family is thankful to him for accepting our invitation. I welcome him on behalf of the Gandhi Peace Foundation. I welcome Sushi Radha Bhatt, Chairperson Gandhi Peace Foundation. I also welcome the distinguished audience present in the auditorium for sparing time to grace this occasion. Now I request our chief guest, Honorable Professor Abhijit Pathak, to deliver the lecture the title of the lecture is The Politics of the Debunking to a Creative Engagement with Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, Confession of a Troubled Soul. Professor Abhijit Patakji. Uh, Madam uh, Radha Bhatt, uh, friends and colleagues. I am really honored that uh, Can you hear me now? I'm really honored uh, Gandhi Peace Foundation has given me an opportunity to come here and share some of my views with you. Uh, I'm not a Gandhian. I'm a student of social science and from the university. No. I'm not so actively involved in political movement but I do take interest in things which are happening around. And as a student of philosophy, as a student of human society, I do take interest in Gandhiji, his writings, and the almost epic kind of life that he led. Possibly uh, today uh, uh, my presentation uh, 
would throw some light on this engagement with Gandhiji. But let me begin with the point that January 30, uh, 2013, and quite early in the morning, and suddenly I realized that nothing changes, nothing seems to be old, and every morning is new. I was seeing the sun rise, and I was equally amazed and surprised. And I looked at the sunrise with great wonder. But then see how the mind begins to operate. On the one hand, the eastern horizon, the sun is rising, and the entire majesticity of the sunrise. But my mind, a fluctuating mind and a restless mind, was going back. Almost 8th May 1941, I reached Shantiniketa and I see an old man with very expressive eyes, with a long beard, looked like a sage, 80 year old, and delivering the last convocation speech at Shantiniketan, and Tagore speaking on crisis in civilization. And when concluding the speech, Tagore saying that before my own eyes, I see the crumbling ruins of a proud European civilization, obsessed with the doctrine of a very hard masculinist militant nationalism. And the war that I am seeing all around is nothing but the expression of that militant nationalism. So I see a proud civilization crumbling, and I see that the poisonous plumes darken the atmosphere all around. But I would not lose hope in humanity, in mankind. And I tend to believe that the sun would rise once again, and the sun would rise in the eastern horizon, and a new dawn of civilization would emerge from the eastern horizon. That was 8th May 1941, and Tagore delivering the speech, Crisis in Civilization. Almost after seven years, after Tagore delivered the speech, and then just I opened the morning newspaper, and the newspaper Hindu, which many of you read, carried an important page, an old, an entire page, and the page just, <clears throat> just I began to read that page, and it reprinted one news report which Hindu published on 31st January 1948. And the report is like this, that after the conclusion of the meeting with Shardar Ballabhai Patel, Gandhiji left his room in the villa house, and Monu Gandhi and Abha Gandhi, he was leaning his shoulders on Monu Gandhi and Abha Gandhi, and he just moved a step forward, two, three steps forward, a man, approximately aged 35, arrived and said, Pranam, Namaste. Gandhi exchanged the reply. And then this man said, Today you are late in the prayer meeting. And Gandhi nodded. Gandhi was indeed late. And Gandhi said, Yes, I am late. And then he came forward and brought his revolver and three bullets and these three bullets penetrating into the frail body of Gandhi on stomach and chest. And Gandhi immediately collapsed. It was 5.12 p.m. at that time. Tagore's Convocation speech, 1941, and seven years after that, January 30, 1948, Gandhi falling down, got his bullets, and Gandhi collapsing. And I was seeing the sunset, and the mind was agitated and restless. I was asking myself, if at the moment of the sun rise, my mind is so agitated and restless, Tagore's reflection on crisis in civilization, Tagore's reminder of the dangerous and the poisonous plumes of hatred that darkened the atmosphere, and just seven years after that, God's bullets 
and Gandhiji crumbling. So if that is what happens at the moment of sunrise, what would happen at the moment of the sunset? About the sunset, I will speak a little later. But before that, let me just begin with my own